Good morning. Uh, so uh, it's been a little while since we recorded. Um, took a little break. Um, um, and there's a few things I did during that time uh, with Simpy Pixie um, just to kind of tidy things up. Um, but mainly just in the way that things are uh, organized in the project. Um, so I'll uh, give a quick, quick demo of that and then um, get on with some development. Uh, so here. So, so the main thing um, that I had to change um, <clears throat> just after I think my last recording, um, Wales beat well to beta 36 dropped um and i had been using that um sort of exploring it and doing some uh sort of uh yeah exploratory test uh development with it which i committed to snippet pixie um and so then i um updated the uh, Nix OS package and pushed that up and got it reviewed. Um, and then it eventually uh, made its way through CI. Um, but that took a little while. And um, while I was uh, waiting for that to happen, I updated the um, the project to use an overlay. Um, so it was using this overlay, which is using beta 36. Um, and then basically all all that's changed compared to a package. Uh, the package is this um, shards. Um, everything else is exactly the same. You know, an overlay has to do super rather than like package and stuff like that. But so I had that, um, and then I was actually using that um, in uh, the project by passing this overlays. Um, I'll just take that comment off so you can see what it means. But yeah, this import overlay, um, overlay is import, um, which I, I took, it took a while for me to work out how to do that. Well, I didn't even work out how to do it. I had to basically ask for help um, in the next OS form because I could just, I don't know, I had a mental block on that. Um, and the kind soul um, showed me how to do this in the, uh, in the shell script. So that was, much appreciated. Um, but since, um, and then anyway, that unblocked um, the project so that I could um, just c continue tinkering with it um, using beta 36 without having kind of environmental issues and stuff with it not being there. Even if I was using the um, the updated version through NixEnv, when you use a Nix shell for um, your environment, you kind of want everything has, well, everything has to be sort of sorted out via that next shell. Um, so um, that's all very good. It was all working nicely. I had now had Wales uh, to be to 36 working, um, but I was having real problems with um, what I wanted to do was to make sure that this dist um, and all its assets and stuff um, are not checked in to GitHub, uh, not GitHub, Git, because <laughs> um, I use source hub. Um And the reason I was having real problems there um, was because of the way that Wales currently um, analyzes the, uh, the source code effectively by using this um, modules. It does a generate module to then generate um, the runtime, uh, the Go, uh, so all the stuff that is actually generated from the project. So all your like functions that you have hanging off your structs and bound to the project. So it does this um, when you're using Wales Dev, it runs a generate modules, um, generate module. Um, to generate all this information and the TypeScript version of it and all this kind of stuff. 
um, but it doesn't do that when you do a build. Um, and there's a little bit of a um, kind of got you in that, that if you don't want the dist, you're in trouble um, because if this, this is the right one, yep. Um, you need to have the disk there to embed. Um, and when it's doing the generate module, it analyzes this and it fails straight away if you don't have a disk file for it to, um, a disk folder for it to like embed and do the analysis on. So um, you can't get rid of this. Um, you have to have something. I couldn't find any way of saying, hey, in when these tags are um, being analyzed, don't bother with embedding this because you don't need it. It's only front end stuff. It's all the assets um, to, to get the Go stuff working. You don't need that. Um, so I ended up, um, this is actually a little bit different to what we get in the template. In the template, you get that. So you get, um, it's looking for the front end dist folder directory. Um, and if you don't have any kind of normal files in there, so like an index or um, something, um, anything which is not hidden, it will fail. So um, what I've done is I've been a bit cheeky and I've changed my temp, uh, the, the go embed. So it now looks for any files in the disk, in the dist. Um, and that includes um, hidden. Uh, so that means that I now have a, um, the ability to use like a dot keep, which is actually, um, you know, not going to be seen and whatnot. Um, but it doesn't really make any difference um, when you're navigating and stuff, you're just not going to see it and so on. Um, and then I've updated the make file. Is this the one? Yes. Uh, so it now does a little bit extra. So it does its own Rails generate module before doing a build. Um, and that means that it can um, generate all the Rails JS um, assets that are then needed by the front end when it does the build. Um, so it's just a little bit of a workaround. Um, I tried to see if there's a way that I could um, get like an option or just get generate module to happen during a build before the front end um, build happens. Uh, but I got a little bit um, confused by a few things going on there. There's this, um, I'll have to have another look, um, but it would be nice to maybe, if not manage to work out how to do it, um, maybe just, you know, propose it as a feature that you can have the Wells JS generated during build um, so that it can then be used uh, by the front end because uh, the front end will reference those JS files. Uh, so that's where I got. Um, so I've got to the point now um, where um, I think all my builds are working. Um, so I've now got Ubuntu up and running as well. I don't know if I had that up and running beforehand. Um, and I've also obviously got Nix, uh, NixOS um, uh, working as well. So they're both clean and working um, and neither of them are needing uh, the, the dist file or the Wales.js um, directories to be saved uh, to Git, which is really handy. Um, I also, I think, you probably haven't seen this before, but I also put a bunch of like to do's. Basically, these are this is all there is. I haven't put any uh, information in there. It's just like, hey, welcome screen. <laughs> That's it. No info. But it's just like a little reminder of all the bits and bobs that I currently need to do, um, so that I can kind of start checking them off um, as we kind of complete them. Um, I'm sure I'll come back to some of them again um, to make sure they're complete, um, you know, after a bit of testing and so on. But that's where I am. Um, so I'm at the point now where nothing else has actually changed in the actual um, 
UI and so on. Um, so I think I just need to do, if I don't make clean all, and then uh, let's just do a quick test. Make sure it's okay. And then I make. You see there, there was a little bit. Um, this is the Wells Generate module now, so it does all this and it creates the uh, um, app JS and stuff there before it then kicks off Wells Build, um, which does all this stuff here, including the front end. That would depends on those um, Wells JS um, files. Um, so that's that. Um, if I go into the GUI. Um, and then let's just do, we'll get the daemon up and running first. Yep, so it's just been generated. See if that works. Yeah, it does, hopefully. And then I can just run the GUI. There it is, uh, no real difference yet. Um, since last time, uh, same old stuff. Uh, don't even know what I've got. Let's see. Yeah, we already got that one. That's good. Anyway, um, there is um, a few bits and bobs that I want to change in this though. So if I were to remove the abbreviation, it still enables me to save. And it just so happens that I've at some point accidentally done that before. And so it's actually picking up that there is already an empty abbreviation version in there, which is not good. Um, that shouldn't be in there. Um, so we need to clean that out. Um, and we need to stop this from being, happen uh, being able to be pressed or clicked, what do you want to say? Um, but anyway, so we're basically at the point, no real changes here, but the whole build infrastructure is a lot better. Than um, uh, and we're using beta 36 of Wales for the GUI. Um, so no other changes, uh, the CLI and the daemon haven't changed at all. So, but so uh, let's fix that one little change there, uh, one little bug effectively. Uh, right, what do we need? We don't need any of these. Uh, what we need is the add snippet screen. So here's the uh, all the basics here. Uh, we have a handle cancel and a handle save. Um, what we want to do is make sure we can't do the handle save. Uh, and that's called by the button down here. Oh, that's badly formatted. Let's fix that. Okay. Um, so I guess the easiest way would be to just put an online and just put a button got disabled. We could use that. Okay, so at the moment we're doing this connection check-in stuff. So uh, if you've not seen this before, um, <clears throat> so when the GUI is running, if I go down there, if I kill the, the daemon and stop it from running, uh, within a few seconds, this is going to go, hey, oh, the daemon's not running. Could not connect to the Snippapixie daemon, and it disables this. Uh, button so I can't save anymore um, which is what we want when we're trying to do an ad with a empty abbreviation so we want to basically just use that same variable um, so this is dynamically um, analyzed um, at the moment it's using that connection okay uh, which is coming from a um, just a interval timer that's just pinging the daemon was saying, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Um, and if it doesn't get, um, if it gets an error, um, basically it'll just turn that off. 
um, in the store. Sets it to a boolean false. Uh, so we need to also put in a little bit of smarts here um, to analyze what's going on in the variables that have been bound. So um, for the abbreviation, we have a variable there, uh, which is set up here. Um, and we want to check it. Um, There's a few different ways we could do this. One way would be to use it as part of a sort of validation routine. But I'm not sure there's much to be done there. The only thing you ever, the only thing that you can't put in the abbreviation is nothing. And that kind of makes, that's kind of obvious. Um, although, a little bit of uh, text there might help. Let's do the bare minimum and then we can always come back if there's like a usability issue there. So I just want to get this fixed so that we don't have any more empty abbreviations. So what we'll do here is if there's no connection, um, hmm. Yeah, we could do this, can't we? We could do an inline test here. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure if we can do this. We'll find out in a minute. Um, or abbreviation dot length zero. Let's see what happens. All right, we'll save that. Um, and we will. Well, let's run Wells Dev. Right, hold on, let's get Snippet Pixie up. And then we'll do, let's do Wells Dev now. So that we get some dynamic stuff in case there's any issues there. Okay. Ah, disabled straight away. That's good. Now, does it work when we start adding things? It does. Okay. Hmm, actually, that is another bit, bit of validation, isn't it? We could test to see whether we've already got this. And note that you can't do that on add, because that would work, I think. Depends on whether I've got that already in there. Yeah, but if I try it again, it's going to let me. But it's going to fail. Yeah, OK. So maybe we should put some validation text there to say um, already exists. Yeah, let's do the work. Okay. So that's probably not enough then. Um, why did I kill that off? I don't need to kill that off. It's Wells Dev. Okay. Let's, uh, I'm going to do a little test here. If I put that in there. think it will clear out when I rebuild. We'll see. I haven't done that in a while. Okay, so this is not enough. I'm um, doing just abbreviation length. We want to do two more things. 
we want to say why the button's disabled because we now have three cases or well, we'll have three different scenarios um, so they are going to be can't connect to the snippet pixie daemon um, no abbreviation entered or abbreviation already exists um, which requires you to go off edit the other one to a different name or delete it and then come back and do an add um, there's, there's no way, way around other ways um, so few different things to do there. Let's get um, let's get things working for these two um, by having some way of showing what's going on, the reason for there being a problem. Um, And then we'll extend things to do the test for um, existing abbreviation. So the idea, so we'll go decide now is where to what to do. Right. So we do already have. A notification area but at the moment that is kind of a very it's almost like a hard-coded um, notification that's very specific to that it's in this it's in the screen do we want to use that for saying that Wales already exists as an abbreviation? Or do we want to have something under the abbreviation to say, you know, this abbreviation already exists? Yeah, I think maybe we're looking at, yeah, we're looking at two different, two different things here. It means that we can also have a, oh, there's, there's going to be three, you could in, you could have like two different things going on at the same time. You could, you can't save because you haven't got the daemon running, can't connect to it. Um, and you haven't entered anything anyway, or you've got a, well, that's the only combination where both are there. And then once that's gone away and we can test, you might get a, like a notice underneath to say, hey, this abbreviation already exists because we can actually ping the daemon. Yeah, okay, we'll keep this up here, but we'll have field level um, validation as well. I think that would be best. Yeah. Okay, so let's extend the um, the form now. Okay, so we're instantly at that point where we're going to be doing this more than once. Do we want to have a separate um, do we want to just do it in the form and have to remember to put in the validation or should we use an input field uh, component and pass in any validation error text and stuff and keep it all consistent I think that sounds right okay new component time so right, let's close off these two we don't need these there 
and then we're going to have a new component, um, an input. Yes. So, um, the basics are, well, we've got these, so we'll take that so that we know that we're going to have to do that kind of stuff. Um, but what we'll do is we will have a script. Um, and we definitely want to do an export let value and it'll start off as empty and we're just going to bind directly to that so we can take all that out there and it works straight away there hopefully um, we also are going to lose the ID Hopefully that's okay. You're generally going to be taking the values out of it. We're not going to use the ID. Are we even using the ID? In there, we're not, are we? Ah. Uh, We are in the body. We're using it in the CSS. Which is okay at the moment because we're not going to override the text area yet. I don't need to. Any validation for that yet. And empty is fine. So, okay there, but we might want to pass in some sort of ID, but we can't use ID itself because that's kind of reserved. Can't put that on a component. So, Yeah, let's just you let's let's hedge our bets here. Um, let's just have um, ID equals name. That way we can actually reuse that if we want to as a name proper name field as well. Um, we'll do this export. Let name equals um, hmm. this is where it could get a bit tricky. We'd have to make sure we always pass it in. You kind of multiple IDs that match. Do we need it? Well, at the moment, we don't need it, so let's punt on thinking about that until we need it. Let's not complicate things for no reason. Okay, so we've got value coming in. Um, what we're going to need is um, some sort of validation. Uh, so how are we going to do that? I guess we could have a 
and I have a message. And so if we have an error message, oops, that might be enough. We'll see in a sec. Um, let's close that off before I forget. How will we display this? Just div? so that we don't have any styling other than what we apply. Don't think I want to use a paragraph there. Or a label for sure. So, but I do want it to be block, so I don't want to use a span. So let's do div. Um, and we don't need to give it any anchor here because we're in a component. Um, so we'll just do that. And we will do just in case HTML error message and then right I'm gonna not do any styling just yet we'll do that in a second and see it update hopefully as I do it um, so what do we have we've got a way of getting value in we've got a way of getting the error message in okay so back here We're going to make this an input. Uh, we don't have an ID anymore. And we don't have a type. We need to import that. That's fine. Let's rearrange these into hierarchical. There we go. Screen, input, and then button. I like to keep things a bit organized as to when they're being used. The buttons are the last thing. So they're going to go after the input. Uh, and then Oh, we need to pass that label back into it as well, so. Ah, okay. We do need. So are we going to? Yeah, we are going to need a name. If we're going to do it properly. Yeah, okay. So let's take that label. Put it in here. Um, and then we're going to call this. Mm, it's going to get tricky. Um, Because I want the label above and I don't want it to be in front of the input. I want to keep this format. 
I don't want to do a wrap. I don't want to have the label inside the input. Um, so we are going to have to play with IDs and things really. There's no other way of referencing, is there? Hmm. Okay, what we'll do is we'll just force the issue. So we'll do um, export let uh, name equals Yeah, just call it input. See what happens there. Um, so it's going to be four. Name. And we need to have ID equals name and then this stuff we can either use as label Yeah. Take that out. Let's call it label. I don't know if that's going to be allowed. We'll see. Here's a thing. I'm just going to try something out here. So if we do if label we'll display it, otherwise we don't. Just for fun, I want to see how that works. Okay, so we've got an input there. If I'm using name, I should probably use name correctly. Okay. So we've now got to the point where we have that has been bound to the value, but we're not passing in any of the other attributes. We're only passing in the value at the moment. So we've got name is going to be input. Label is nothing and hopefully does not display at the moment. And same for error message. 
but I've got a feeling I might need to do a length check there or take out the equals. But we will see. Okay, we've got the import there. And at some point, we're going to have to set the error stuff up. But we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so save that. Come back. Oh, it's gone. That's good. Um, let's put that across here so we can see it when I make the changes. Come on. Thank you. All right, make it small. Okay, so we have that. Now, if I... So if I do name equals that and save it. Oh, no, name isn't what I wanted there. <laughs> I wanted label. There we go. Okay. That's okay. Let's see what we've got on the um, in the HTML. Just do that. Input text type blah labels okay or input. So I mean it's kind of I wonder if that's gonna be a bad idea. But that seems to be working. It's not complaining. In the console, it's just that. So that's fine. Everything's OK. I do need to change this border. Change. Sort that out in a minute. Um, it gets too thick uh, because I used a rem instead of just like two pixels. Um, so I need to change that. I have to check what I did on there. Uh, okay, so that's fine, I think. Um, and then at some point we need to adjust this. Ow. Let's get the daemon up and running so I can actually test the uh, where I want to be here yeah so that hasn't changed ah there you go yeah of course good right and same here still working that's fine because that means the bind is working which is good but now we need to put some custom validation in. Uh, so we need to be able to do something that does something like um, error message equals label. There it is. So let's start that up. That is offset. And that is not good. Okay. Hmm. Why is that? It's not offset there, though. Zero, zero, zero. 
Ah. That is, okay. But it's got the border. There's this padding, but it has the border, and that's it. Maybe that's what I'm seeing the difference on. If I take that down to zero. No. Right. Can't tell there. Hmm. Anyway, let's uh, start it up and see what we get. So we want a div. Hey, oh. <laughs> style div um, just the color, I think, is fine. I can't remember how to do this now. It's far, isn't it? Far. Danger. Okay. Here we go. Um, okay, but that padding is all wrong. So have I got in my global Hmm. Okay, well, while I'm here, just need to check that uh, connection notice. Class danger. Hmm. Okay. I have to be careful about that. At the moment, I'm setting the danger class to include a border, which I definitely wouldn't have wanted here. So I did the right thing by just using that there. But I might need to make this a little bit um, more specific to when it's applied. Um, hmm. I'm just going to kill off the uh, daemon for a sec. And then I'm just going to adjust a couple of things here while I'm here. So padding is fine but the border yeah maybe not I think one's maybe enough but the rem here no the, sorry the border radius Probably shouldn't do them. Although it seems to work. Which 
change the pixels. Yeah. It's not quite as nice, is it? Oh, actually, if I do um, 35. Hmm. All right, not point three rooms, no difference there. Okay, we'll keep that because that's where we've been. What we've been using elsewhere, but we'll, and we'll keep the pixels. Okay. Um, Let's just do border width changes elsewhere then. So here on an input and text area, I'm going to use pixels as border width. So we don't get um, the weirdness. So at the moment in here, it's it really thick. So if I go back here and I save this off. Oh, we've got a smaller border radius as well. Interesting. All right, and I'm going to save that. That didn't make any difference. What? How come? I should probably check that then. is curious. Interesting. Okay, that is, yeah, that's way over there then. Not the same as that. There's something funny going on there in the rendering. But mind you, that's not the target. This is the target. All right, yeah, I didn't have that before. What did I have? 0 0.1, okay. That's why it wasn't so bad. Right, so 0 0.1 there. Right, okay. Yeah, that's still too much there. Okay, 
I'm just going to keep that in, I think. I think that was enough. I think I might be changing the colors up a bit later anyway. I think that's slightly thinner now, isn't it? Still. Not the same as that. Which is very curious. Hmm. Anyway, Gendo, uh, Sidelines, so right, so I've put that to one pixel. Um, let's just double check if I've got any other border color, style, width, radius. At least it matches that now. Yeah, let's do that. Um, color, complex solid, radius 0 0.3, solid 0 0.3. Okay. Got more consistency there now. And we can change it consistently, maybe. I can always up, I can always put a variable in for that at some point. I need to um, for the radius maybe that might be handy uh, but for the moment we're okay so, so okay so interesting that is now broken the output Oh, that's because of the thing. Okay. I need to compensate for that. So I need to update the size. Why is that pushed down? Because that should go down to next to nothing. Oh. It's probably not in the um, calculations. Okay. Um, actually, no, it should be right. We'll check that. Should 
should be okay. Nothing there. Okay, all right, well, I'll sort that out in a minute. Let's get this uh, validation working. That was the goal. So we need to do something about this. So we need to have um, an error message. Yeah, I'm going to have a different variable. So we'll have abbreviation error message. Big long thing. Okay. So what we can do here is Let's do function get deviation should we use the global yeah well it's not global but yeah so we'll just do quick checks so if deviation dot Length view length equals zero return and then we're gonna have a new string so uh, we need to do uh, dollar underscore um Abbreviation. I'm going to change things up now. Empty. Okay. And then we're going to have this. It's going to be dynamically set. And we're going to have deviation error message is equal to get abbreviation error message. So that will keep that. That's going to be updated anytime there's a change. I mean, I, actually, I should pass in abbreviation to make it better scoped. Let's do that. I wonder if it will complain about shadowing. Maybe not. Does it complain at all? No, it's good. So that will do that. And then theory that's there. Oh, it's not liking that. Okay, let's tidy this up then. Hmm. 
see what happens when I now. Wow. Gives it two. Why two? Okay, whatever. That's fine. Uh, okay, so that should, in theory, give me an, um, a different thing when I save this. He says, and then I need to go set that. Okay. And then when I put something in, it goes away and comes back. That's good. Still need to sort out this though. Right. So I want to change up. So here we've got add snippet error title. To show it. Okay. I want to have this right. Where's my stuff? There we go. So okay. Uh yeah. What we're gonna do here is gonna do this. And we're gonna have a title. then empty Has that not been picked up then? Abbreviation empty. Ah, uh, because I haven't got that in the, um, it's not going to be, well, uh, Wells Dev should pick that up. Let's kill that. Try again. Yeah, that's interesting. It wasn't picked up. Come on, do your thing. Okay. 
Oh. Yes. I should change that too. And I want to do that here. Which means changing this. This might do it properly if I change this before saving the other one. Oops. No. One thing. Okay, so if I save them both at the same time, no. Hmm. Hmm. Curious. Ah, it's a front end thing. Must be part of the library. Weird. Okay. Uh, right. So we now have a validation message there. Um, that's all got the basics going on there. We know the label works. We know that the error message works. Um, we have the daemon thing working. Okay, so abbreviation must be set. That fixes it. But we know that this should fail, but does not. Okay, so we need to make another change here then. So, um, I've kind of run out of time actually before I start doing this. I should maybe save this off and then tackle that. Uh, next time. So, yeah. I don't like that text. Let's change that. It's a little bit. Please enter an abbreviation. don't like how it jumps either. Push it down, we should probably just have a placeholder there. It's not great. 
So That doesn't seem right. I might cheat in a minute and just put a uh, no backspace as a default. Does stay there. The problem is, oops. Yeah, okay, what we'll do is um I might just do a quickie quick change here where we'll just do um Actually, I wonder. Just a little test here. Think that will get overwritten and just be empty because I'm setting it. But we'll find out in a second. Yeah, okay. So in that case, Uh, we'll do I'll try a couple of things. Well, it's definitely time to um, give up. I'm getting lots of noise outside. Um, error message. Uh, yeah, if it's set, use it. I'm going to do the long form here. Otherwise, we'll use this. that here why is that complaining then there we go okay That's quick and dirty, but it will do the job for the moment. We don't get the uh, the change in there. That 
that's fine. Okay. Right, that's enough. Um, I need to get out with my day. Um, so I'm going to save this off. Make sure that's all cleared out. So what did we change? Um, well, the main thing there is, um, oops. Add. Uh, this change will add input component with built in label and error message here it is yeah that do mm -hmm. thank you okay done Okay, um, so that's uh, one step forward. Uh, next time, what I need to do is put in some check-in of um, of the abbreviation. So let's put a reminder in here to do check abbreviation not already exist. Okay, so that's the job for next time. Cool. All right, uh, thanks for watching. Um, until next time, you take care.